We invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We are going to, Lord willing, address the subject in verse number 11, strong delusion. The peoples of God need to be cautioned that in this last day and last age, there's going to come a strong delusion from God. Now, he's going to use the forces of darkness and the forces of evil to do it, and they're going to be so convinced that they're of the Lord. The Scripture said they will uh, even kill you and think they do God a service. I think Jesus said that in John chapter 16. Let me make sure. John chapter 16 Verse 1, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. That's what the message is about today. The coming strong delusion from the Lord is going to offend you if you don't know who it is and what's going on. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Listen, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that they do God's service. They will even get involved with murder, and that is murdering the peoples of God and say that it was the Lord that prompted them to do it. Now, that's a strong delusion. You need this, folks. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you. You pray for yourself, and we'll see what God shows us because this has already begun on this earth. Lies are everywhere. And you need to make sure that you follow only the truth. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. It's hard to find a place to get in on this. We're just going to start with verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. Someone said that was the hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority. That's a good phrase. The hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. John said in 1 John, there are already many antichrists in this world. We have been taught and brainwashed to thinking that antichrist was one single individual. But it's a mystery of iniquity. It's a kingdom. You need to think about it more as a, the kingdom of the harlot church and Satan as the head of it. To deceive, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth or hindereth or resisteth or restraineth will, will, will restrain until he be taken out of the way. It's talking about the power of Antichrist. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. You need to stay close to the spirit of the mouth of God. Not just the word of the Bible, but the person of the word, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just the mouth of God, but the spirit of his mouth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonder, wonders. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now listen. Why does there need to be a strong delusion. Next word. Because. Here's the reason. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because, number one, they receive not the love of the truth. One of the most dangerous creatures on, face, on the face of planet earth is a legalistic moralist who is bound up in religious orthodoxy. He does not have the love of the truth. God is love, the person of the word, not just the written record book. The written record book says the letter of the law killeth. It's the spirit of the word that maketh alive. So you make sure you read the Bible as it were, not literally, but spiritually speaking, emotionally speaking, on your knees. Ask the Lord to open your eyes, to take the veil away, let you go in and see 
the spiritual application of the word of God to your heart. Because, he said, they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You understand, dear soul, that there are people that have memorized vast portions of the scriptures that are not saved. They have the truths of God, but they do not have the love of the truth. It's just a matter of fact thing. I have witnessed this many, many times in my years of preaching and my years as a Christian attending organized religion. A lot of people who seem to be very devoted and dedicated people can quote and will talk about the scriptures, but they don't have the love of Christ in their heart. And when they leave the church building, they leave the Lord. They don't think about him anymore. It's not part of their everyday life unless they get into an argument with somebody about some pet peeve that they have that uh, they, they want to argue about, usually about abortion or about homosexuality or something like that, that that are not the issue at all. The issue, dear friend, is God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That's the issue. But we're all fighting battles on fields that God never ordained. And it says that uh, uh, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You can't be saved unless you receive the love of the truth. For this cause, for the purpose and for the cause and as a result of them not receiving the love of the truth, God shall send them strong delusion. Now you've got to understand that. I've told you over the years time and time again, all men are God's servants, but not all men are God's sons. God uses the wicked. God uses the devil. They all serve him. There is no creature in the entirety of creation that is not a servant of the Most High God. But not all of them are just and righteous and holy. The devil is his it is as cruel and mean and, and, and full of iniquity as anybody possibly can be. But God uses him for his own glory. Listen, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Now that word strong, you'll find it in Ephesians 3, 7 and Ephesians 4, 16, the same Greek word, but there it's translated effectual working. For God shall send them an effectually working delusion. It is effectual. It don't strike out. It hits the ball. It knocks a home run. It makes it, uh, it happens according to what God purposes. It is an effectual working. So the strong delusion is an effectual delusion. Now, the word delusion is the same word error as found in Matthew 27 and verse 64. God shall send them an effectual working error. It is also the word deceit in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 3. So God shall send an effectual working of an error and of a deceit. Sounds totally opposite of God, doesn't it? Yes, but God said to the wicked, I'm going to show myself wicked. To the froward, I will show myself froward. With what uh, judgment you judge, it shall be measured to you again. So God's saying, if you don't receive the love of the truth, you will be candidates for the effectual working of deceit and error sent from God. Now, let me help you born-again Christians right quick uh, in Matthew 24 and verse number 24. The Bible says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch, watch it, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Friend, you're going to be influenced by this. It's going to be... Uh, 
strong in the world. It's all, it already is. Lies are unbelievably uh, predominant in our nation. And people just lie, and they, they, they know they're lying, and we know they're lying, but it's persuading a lot of people, and they're standing up against the things of God. So God said, if it were possible. So you as one of the elect, if you are born again, child of God, God saved you on purpose, he ordained your salvation from the foundation of the world and chose you in Christ Jesus. Therefore, it is impossible for you to be deceived. But it's not impossible for you to be influenced. Did you hear that? These things are so powerful. Remember, they're coming from God. But they're not coming from God for your good or for their good. They're coming from God as a result and as it were a vengeance from Almighty God because they have uh, perverted the things of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. So we see it says, God shall send them strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Now we're going to deal with that the Bible said in uh, Hebrews, it is impossible for God to lie. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 18. It is impossible for God to lie. But he has a servant. His name is Satan. And Jesus reveals him in John chapter 8 and verse number 44. And it's a very interesting verse. We have used it time and time and time again to help you understand what's going on in this world. John chapter 8 and verse number 44. He says to the people who are members of the harlot church, these people, their soul, they're moralists and they base their morality upon the scriptures. And for a time you might think that they were God's people. You might have actually been involved with them in various church orders. But you find out that something ain't right about that person. They don't have the same love of the truth that I have in my heart. And so you understand and see that uh, God says uh, to them in John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. That means there's a birth from beneath. A man don't get to be a father without the birth of a child. Jesus said, you must be born again. Those that are born of the Spirit have eternal life. But they are those who can't come back from the birth uh, from Satan. And they are reprobated, and therefore they cannot come back from that. It is impossible. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance. So he says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. All right, what is his lust? Number one, he was a murderer from the beginning. Listen, Cain couldn't smite God, so he smote Abel. People who have the light to shine upon them, it condemns them. They're condemned already. And they don't come to the light lest their deeds be made manifest. So what have they got to do? They can't deny the truth of the light and revelation of God's word. So they do the next best thing. They kill Abel. Whoever is bringing that light, whoever is... Uh, establishing that light among us, God's ministers, God's people, then they do everything they can to destroy that person. We have had an insurrection in this church not too many years ago, and the thing that they did and the way that they got it to work was to blaspheme me. You go after the leader of the, of the light. You do all you can to destroy his reputation and destroy people's confidence in him. That's what happens. That's what they do. 
They can't kill God, so they go after the one that represents God. They try to put the light out. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. To be a murderer does not just simply entail put, putting a gun up to somebody's head and pulling the trigger. Well, that's not the murder, all the murder he's talking about. He's talking about a murdering of the truth. They abode not in the truth. Therefore, they were murderers. They killed out something far more uh, serious than just killing an individual, a human being. Uh, Cain killed Abel. But what he was doing was killing out the testimony of God. He abode not in the truth. If he had done what God said and had the love of the truth, he would have loved his brother and they would have been together uh, throughout the rest of their life. But he couldn't stand the light. They don't come to the light lest their deeds be made manifest. That the, uh, let me read it. John chapter 3 and verse number 19. He that believeth not, verse 18, on him is condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because Wait a minute. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. If sin has not been conquered by the power of the Holy Spirit and you have not, been, have not been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb of God, then you will hate the light. You will be a murderer of those who bring forth the light. That's just the way that it is. And remember, dear soul, these religious people are always opposed to the spiritual people. I'm not talking about people who are vile and filthy and wretched completely and 100% entirely. Some of them are those uh, that are attending church, maybe in the pulpits, maybe in, in the uh, leadership of the church. But you can tell that they hate the light because they don't want the light exposing their evil deeds. He says, uh, they need to come to the light lest their deeds should be made manifest, uh, uh, that they are wrought in God. The Bible says, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Dear soul, it's ungodliness, it's wickedness, you can, you can, I guarantee you, 100% of the time, if you find a person who doesn't like godly preaching and does not like the Holy Spirit applying the word to them, next thing you know, they're blaspheming the preacher and trying to destroy the light. I guarantee you, 100% of the time, they're in some kind of ungodliness in their life because their deeds are evil. That's the reason they do it. They hate the light because their deeds are evil. It exposes them. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Now we're not just talking about, again, people who are unchurched, that may be included, but we're talking also about people who are churched and who try to have, uh, it, that have itching ears and heap up to themselves teachers and preachers that will preach like they want. <clears throat> They're hire, they're hire, they, they will hire them a man that will say the things that, that don't get on uh, their nerves and don't bother them, doesn't convict them. They don't have any love of the truth. You can preach anything you want to, just don't make any application of it. And dear soul, time and time again over the years, we've seen this church emptied. We've had two entire whole and complete congregations come to us from other churches. But they didn't stay. They thought, oh boy, we'll come and we'll join in with this group and it'll be great and we'll have a wonderful time. Next thing you know, they're gone. Why? They can't stand the gospel. 
They can't stand the light. Dear soul, the one way to keep your church pure, to keep your heart pure, to keep your family pure, to keep this nation pure is to stick with the light. Never, never back off. Keep on preaching the word of God and giving out what God says. First thing you know, you'll look around and these wicked people won't be with you anymore. They may have been very beneficial physically, financially even, but they're not God's people. It said, this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that hateth, that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, uh, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, in order that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. One man loves the truth, and he loves the truth, and he comes to you and says, Thank you, preacher, for preaching like that. It made me understand and see uh, myself as I really am, and I need that. Another man goes out the door and gets people out in the parking lot and starts lying on you and do everything he can to smear you and, and to destroy your reputation because he, the light exposed him, and he didn't like it. And he is not going to let go of his wicked and evil ways. There are ungodly people turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? It simply means a license to sin. They will take the grace of God and say, well, I'm... I'm saved by grace, I can do anything I want to. Well, if you're saved by grace, you can do anything you want to, but God will give you a brand new want to, a sanctified want to, and you won't, to, won't want to do anything that's ungodly. So he says uh, that, uh, let me get back where we were in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Dear soul, the gospel is the cause of the strong delusion. The gospel is the cause of the truth being shed in, abroad in your heart and you being brought to God. It's a, it's a sword, but as Brother Bobby brought it up this morning before we came to the pulpit, it's a double-edged sword. It will not only bring forth the truth of God into the hearts of God's elect people and they be saved, but it will also bring the truth of God into the minds of those who love ungodliness and their deeds are evil, and they will hate that light, and that one gospel will work uh, ill unto them where it works good unto those who receive the love of the truth. It's the same God. It's the same Bible. It's the same Jesus. It's the same preaching. But it has a twofold effect. Those who receive not the love of the truth, God follows up the gospel with a strong delusion. You don't want the truth? All right, here's the lie. But it seems to confirm them in that which they believe. In fact, as we read you in John 16, they can actually commit murder and kill God's people and think they do God a service. Proverbs 16, verse 14, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. These people are so blatantly deceived that they think that they are following the Lord. Listen at Psalm 50. The 50th Psalm. God said in Psalm 50 and verse 16, But unto the wicked God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my commandment in thy mouth? What are you doing quoting the scriptures? Well, I'm a deacon. I'm a preacher. I'm a head of the WMU. Yeah. 
you just want to feel good about yourself and you want other people to think good about you, but you don't have any relationship with the Lord because if the Word of God is preached in His power and His purity by the Holy Spirit, you will despise that light and God will then send you a strong delusion that you might believe a lie and be damned. Psalm 15, verse 16, But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. But what kind of people are these? Skip on down to verse 21. Psalm 15, verse 21. These things hast thou done. Listen. And God said, I didn't do anything about it right then. I kept silence. Well, lightning bolt didn't come down and and kill me, so what I did must have been all right. It must have been fine. Therefore, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. This is God talking to the reprobate. You will actually come to the place that you think that I am like you. And that you are like me. God said, I kept silence. Let you go on and believe the, the lie. And, and the strong delusion came upon you. But listen. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there shall be None to deliver. So people can be involved in wicked deeds. They hate the light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. These are people that have not make, made a radical breach with sin. These are people that do not condemn themselves and judge themselves and seek to have God purify them. These are people that will not stay on their crosses and have God purge them from the wickedness of the flesh. God said, well, I'll just keep silent and let you go on and doing what you're doing. But I'm asking you, what in the world are you doing with my word in your mouth? What are you doing in being involved in that church? What are you doing in being involved in churchanity? What are you doing being involved with organized religion? You don't know God from third base. And I'm not going to let you get away with it. I was, ex I was silent at that one time. But I will set them in order before thee, before thine very eyes. I'm going to make sure you understand that that's wrong. How does he do it? He sends strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, 2 Thessalonians 2. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That goes together. Believe not the truth, pleasure, and unrighteousness. Dear soul, a sheep may fall in the mud hole, but he won't stay in it. If that animal is wallowing in the mud hole, it's not a sheep. It's a sow. God said, his word said in 2 Peter 2, 20-22, that these have returned to their wallowing in the mire. These are like the dog that returns to his vomit and licks it back up again. And so we understand and see that these are natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. That's what they turn out to be. That's all they were to start with. The problem with them was they didn't receive a new nature. They still have the nature of the dog and have the nature of the sow. They were never sheep. Therefore, they don't have the characteristics of the sheep. They may be a, among the sheep. And God told you and, and warned you, beware of wolves that come in sheep's clothing. Dear soul, those wolves will tear you to shreds. Preacher was reading John, uh, Romans chapter 9. What if God willing to show his wrath and make his power known and endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath? fitted to destruction. Deacon said, we don't believe that. He said, that's the word of God. I just read you the word of God. Deacon said, well, we don't believe the way you read it. That's kind of humorous, but it's serious. 
They're not going to receive it no matter what you do. And the Bible said, from such turn away. And the Bible said in what, Revelation 18, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her plagues for, and of, of her sins, but they have reached up to heaven. And God's going to do something about it. Dear soul, there is, uh, there is a deception in this nation. We call ourselves a Christian nation. We are not. We are a warlike people. We see something we want, we just go to war with people and, and get it from them. You need to be careful, dear soul, and not get your patriotism confused with your Christianity. Just because you get a warm, fuzzy feeling when you sing the Star Spangled Banner don't mean you're a born-again child of God. I love America. I've been outside the borders of America. I don't want to go again. I thank God for the place where I was born, the bounds of my habitation, the times before appointed were, uh, were given by the Lord. I thank God for where I am. I love this nation. I do what I need to do. I obey its laws. I try to do everything I can, can to be a good citizen, but I know this. My citizenship as a born-again child of God is in heaven. That's what the book said. So I want you to understand, dear soul, that God Almighty has already begun to send the strong delusion upon America. And lies are everywhere. They came from the devil. But don't be mistaken about it. They were sent by God as he used the devil. Now, as I said at the beginning, it is impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 6 and verse 18. God hates a lying tongue. Proverbs 6 and verse 16 and 17. God will not allow a lying tongue to be in his kingdom. Let me read that to you. Revelation 21 and verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. Those people that are lying that hold their Bibles up and say, we're Christians. Don't believe it. You need to be, be careful. You don't have to stand up against them and get in their face and debate with them. Debate is one of the works of the flesh, not the spirit. Just get away from them. Come out of her, my people. Listen. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Nobody's in the kingdom except those who are in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 22 and verse 15. For without, that is outside of the church, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Did you realize that God pl uh, uh, places whosoever loveth and maketh a lie among such sinners as sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers. Ooh, those, those are awful sins. Whoremongers and murderers, those are awful sins. But God said right up there among them is those who love and make a lie. And dear soul, this is going to be a tool that God uses in this end time and this end day in which we live that is going to bring those who love iniquity and do not love the truth to their, to their purposed end. And you need to be careful because they're going to be uh, your neighbors. They're going to be your senators, your congressmen. They're going to be your representatives. They may be your preacher. They may be your mom and daddy. Their soul, it may be one that you call a brother and sister because y'all are a member of the same church. You need to be careful. And the one thing you need to understand and you be thankful for, as I read you again in Matthew 24, 24, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. It will have an influence on you. You will be troubled by it. 
you will be confused in it. You will have to make uh, choices and say, well, you know what? That ain't the way God has taught me, but that's a dear friend that I've had. I call him a brother. I call her a sister. But I can't go along with that. And this old, you need to be warned of this. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you this now so that when it happens, you might not be troubled by it. We read you that in John 16. So we said, God can't lie. God hates a lying tongue. God will not allow a, a, a lying tongue in his kingdom. And Satan is the father of the lie. We read you, let it, we read you that in John chapter 8 and verse 44. So we understand and see, dear soul, that this is a serious, serious matter. It is the work of Almighty God. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. You make no uh, mistake about it, dear soul. It's coming from God. It's coming because of God. But you say it can't be because God can't lie. It is because God has every creature there is under his authority and under his control. And I want you to remember this, and I've been hated for saying this, making this statement, and ostracized and cast out and hated this soul because of this statement. The devil is God's devil. The devil is God's servant. Now, I want you to go with me to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. God had a king, the king of Israel, that was leading others astray. And in 1 Kings 22, he says, as he talks to his spirits that he gathers before him, and I remember this in Job chapter 1, Verse 6 in Job chapter 2 and verse 1, there came a day when the sons of God appeared before the throne of God. And it's talking about the demonic spirits and the, and the angelic spirits. God calls all the spirits before him. Everybody is subject to God. All creatures are God's servants. Now, God's going to do something about the king of Israel. And he asked this question. 1 Kings 22 and verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? I want him killed. He, he's wicked, and I don't want him involved in my kingdom anymore. I'm going to remove him. Now, who of you uh, can uh, go up and, and cause him to fall at, at Ramoth Gilead in that battle? And one said, Well, I'd do this on this manner, and another said on that manner. They begin to debate and discuss. Well, if you know, since I'm a powerful demon, this is what I do to him. The other said, Well, I'm a powerful demon, this is what I do to him. Next verse, first Kings twenty two and verse twenty one. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said, Oh yeah? How are you going to do it? And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, the Spirit said, I will go forth and I will put a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And God said, Thou shalt persuade him. And he prevailed also. Go forth and do so. The devil, the father of lies, said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I can make sure that he's, he's killed. I can send him up to this battle that he doesn't belong in. He was doing it for his own vain glory, and he was doing it to add money into his coffers and to add land uh, to his kingdom. And this old God said, I want him to go up and fight in that battle. That's where I've ordained that he die. But how am I going to get him up there? 
Y'all tell me what you would do. Of course, God already knew what he would do, and God already knew how it would work, but he wanted them to, to come before him and say it. One said, well, I'll do this, and get him up there. The other said, no, I'll do that. But then another spirit comes up and stands before the Lord and says, I can do it. And God said, how are you going to do it? He said, I'm going to put a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. God said, that's according to what I'm going to write in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 11. That's going to be a tool that I pull out of my toolbox down through the ages, and I'm going to do it down at the end of the age. I'm going to send forth a strong delusion that they might believe a lie and might be damned. God says to that spirit, thou shalt persuade him. It's going to work. And prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore behold. The Lord hath put a lying spirit. In the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Dear soul. It, it's amazing to me. What we see. In our nation. We got all kinds of preachers, female preachers, homosexual preachers, preachers that went to school and learned how to be a preacher. But there are some that's called of God, like Peter and James and John. And they follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth and does what God says. But like... like uh, like the prophets of Baal and the prophets of, uh, of Jezebel, they are far more of those prophets than they are the men, the true servants of God. And you say, well, must be okay. All these preachers are saying the same thing. Did you get to see the voting for the Speaker of the House when all that was on, I know you probably didn't want to watch it because it's so boring. But one of the things that I was amazed at, they said, now the chaplain will come and lead us in prayer. I said, good. We're going to have a man of God come up and going to open his heart up and pray to God, and this nation is going to have to hear him. Nope. Here comes a woman with her necklaces on and her collar around backwards and her little book, and her, she opens it up. And she stands there and reads a printed prayer. I don't know who wrote it. I, I don't know what kind of prayer book that was. But she stood there with her eyes wide open and read that book. And a lot of the House of Representatives guys and gals bowed their head and closed their eyes. But a lot of them didn't. Why should they? She wasn't talking to God. That was just a formality. We are blanketed with lying preachers, with men and women who have not been called, that do not know the Lord themselves. Dear soul, that's the kind of nation you're living in. And I'm sent over here to warn you, you're not, you don't need to try to stand up against it and do something to to get rid of it because God has sent them strong. God's had enough. Whosoever believeth not is condemned already. If it were possible, they, were, they would deceive the very elect. God is in this matter, dear friend, and lying spirits are blanketing our land right now. You need to be careful. You need to take what you hear and, and the, the words that you uh, contemplate and take them before the Lord. And as it were, get on your knees before Almighty God and cry to the Lord, God have mercy upon me. Help me that I would not be deceived. How are they deceived? Because they receive not the love of the truth. Do you love the person of the Lord Jesus? Is he your only everything? Is there anybody or anything 
that you value and love more than the Lord Jesus, you're going to get uh, deceived by a strong delusion. We need to be careful, dear soul. We need to make sure that we love the Lord our God only, and Him only shall we serve. Pray without ceasing. How do you do that? Well, I'll get my little prayer book, and I get up here, and I'm on TV, and I'm going to read this prayer, and they all got to bow their heads. No. When thou prayest, enter into thy, car, into thy closet, and thy Father that heareth thee in secret will reward you openly. You need to talk to him, dear soul. Jesus said that his relationship to the church is like the relationship of a godly husband to a godly wife. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Gave himself for it. So the intimacy that we have with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is that which shall sustain us it shall keep us from being uh, deceived by the strong delusion, <coughs> excuse me, so that we may not believe a lie and be damned. That's the way that it is. You say, well, God can't lie. I understand that. Hebrews 6, 18, it is impossible for God to lie. God hates a lying tongue. I understand that. But what you need to understand is God shall send them strong delusion. You go back and read that 1 Kings uh, 22 again, and you go back and understand how that God, though although he didn't lie, he has lying spirits to go forth and bring forth his will. So let me tell you something. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what the gospel is? So it's death, burial, and resurrection. No, those are facts about the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the revelation of Jesus Christ himself to your soul. And once Christ has been revealed to you, if you receive the love of that truth, you'll be all right. God will take care of you. It will be an intimate relationship between you and the person of the Lord. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. For he that loveth the things of the world hath not the love of God in him. Millionaires, billionaires in, in the Senate, in Congress, in, in, in Wall Street. But we're Christians. I got a photo opportunity holding up a Bible and saying, I'm a Christian. Really? But you got to have the biggest house, covers a half a mile, all kinds of buildings. You got to have the best airplane. You got to have the finest clothes. You you got to be involved with the, with the with the elite people of the world. God said you don't have the love of God in you. Those people are not Christian, dear soul. I don't care what your emotions say. He that hath the love of the Father hath not the love of the world. That's what the book said. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. For he that hath the love of the world hath not the love of the Father in him. I've tried to tell you, try to be faithful, and listen, I feel like sometimes I'm just spitting in the wind. <coughs> Excuse me. Wait a minute. Dry throat. I've told you time and time and time again, you really don't know that many real, true, born-again, spirit-filled Christians. Oh, you know a lot of religionists. You can find a Bible meeting here, there, and yonder. All kinds of religions on the face of this earth. And they can give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. There's some people that have exalted Mary to the degree that, oh, they just have a warm, fuzzy feeling because the Virgin Mary is going to get my prayer through to Christ. 
Dear soul, the only one who gets my prayer through to Christ is the Holy Ghost. There's a way that seemeth right unto the man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. God said we need to, <coughs> there goes my throat again, we need, we need to be careful. Now, we have a few more minutes. Let me, let me finish up in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 13. We just got through reading, God shall send them strong delusion in verse 11. That they might believe a lie, that they should believe a lie. In order that they all might be damned who receive not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You say, that scares me. Good, I'm glad it does. That means you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. What's the next word? Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 13, but... Thank God for that. It's a word of contradiction. Tell me about those of us who are not involved in receiving the strong delusion. <coughs> but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Oh, praise God. I'm glad that next verse is in there. And preacher, I'm glad you're bringing that up because that strong delusion is so strong that nobody's going to be able to resist it that God makes it effectual to. We read you that word. <coughs> strong delusion means effectual delusion. They're not going to be able to overcome this. They are going to believe the lie. And what is the purpose of God causing them to believe a lie? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, brother preacher, give me something to help me. That scares me good. I'm glad it does. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Here's another because. He says in verse 11, the reason that the strong delusion is the coming, because they receive not the love of the truth. But he has a because in verse number 13. The reason you're not going to be deceived in it is because God had chosen you from the beginning to salvation and sanctification of the Spirit. Yes, we're tempted to evil. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it to thy courts above. It's not that we're not tempted to be that, to, to sin. It's not that some sins seem to be more enticing to us than others. But we are sheep. We may fall in a mud hole, but we ain't going to live in there. That's a pig. It's not our nature. The nature of the sheep is to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Listen. Whereunto, 2 Thessalonians 2.14, whereunto he, God, called you by our gospel. It was the gospel that these people did not love that caused them to receive the strong delusion. But it's the gospel that you do love that causes you to obtain to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Dear soul, the wickedness in America is unbelievable. The lies are powerful. The deception is strong. You need to stand forth. Excuse me, stand fast. 
How can you overcome the strong delusion? Because God has chosen you from the beginning to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Just love the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is yet near. Ask the Lord to purge you, cleanse you. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Continually hold yourself up before Almighty God and cry out to God that God may help you. We're not going to be able to overcome temptation unless God helps us. There has no temptation taken you, but it's common to man. Everybody's going to get it, the reprobate and the elect. There's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to every man. Listen, but God is faithful. There's your hope. He will not permit you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, I think. Look it up. <clears throat> when you are caught up in a trial, when you're caught up in, 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 in a temptation, cry out to God. God is faithful. And dear soul, that's the difference between those that hear the gospel and don't believe it and don't receive it and don't love it and receive the strong delusion and those that hear the gospel and do love it and do love the Lord Jesus Christ and seek the Lord because he has ordained them to obtain to glory. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught. What traditions? They ain't talking about going to church and memorizing verses. These traditions are talking about walking with God, knowing the things of the Spirit, not quenching or grieving the Holy Spirit. Learn to walk with God and hold on to those things whether by word or by our, epistle, by our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation. You like that? An everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. The strong delusion is not to hurt you, born again child of God. The strong delusion is to deal with those who did not receive the love of the truth that hold <clears throat> the truth in unrighteousness. Their deeds are evil. They're hypocrites. They're liars. And they're of their father, the devil. <clears throat> it is not to hurt you. But it will influence you. You will have to live in it. It's already here. You are already living in it. And dear soul, you need to understand that you need to have your heart right with God so that your ears will perceive the truth. And you'll be able to identify the truth and say, this is the way. Walk ye therein. The Lord will direct you and guide you because you receive the love of the truth. Ain't God good? Dear soul, deception is upon our land. <clears throat> It's just unbelievable, the lies that are being told, and it's just the way of life in America anymore. How did that happen? <clears throat> we turned away from God. Oh, we kept our churches, and we kept our Bibles, and we kept going to church, and we kept our religion because we all want to go to heaven. But, dear soul, God's not fooled. And those people who do not receive the love of the truth, <coughs> excuse me, will receive strong delusion that they might believe a lie and be damned. But I trust that's not you. I trust that it's not me. And I trust that the Lord Jesus Christ will help us through this time. And dear soul, it says, he shall destroy them with the brightness of his coming and God shall uh, come and appear to us when things get so bad and so dark you can't believe it Jesus will appear may the Lord bless you thank you Lord Jesus for what you've done for us today amen